Once upon a time, there lived an old couple in an old small shack next to a forest. They were living a happy and peaceful life. Their only regret was not having a child of their own. One day, when the old lady was making cookie dough in the kitchen, her husband came in. Darling, what are you cooking today? Oh, my darling, I'm baking a gingerbread man today. The old lady kneaded the dough and cut a gingerbread man shape. After putting it in the oven, she sat down and started to wait for the gingerbread man to bake. When she could smell the delicious cookie all around the air in the kitchen, she put on her oven gloves and took the gingerbread man out. Now it was time to decorate it. She made eyes out of raisins and a cute nose using candy. And then she used some cream to make his hair and clothes. And lastly, she used cherries to make some buttons for him. She had a look at her masterpiece and said, My gingerbread man looks beautiful, but I feel like something is missing. The old lady looked at him again and, Oh, his mouth! I forgot to make his mouth. She drew a mouth on the gingerbread man's face with the cream. Oh yes, now you are complete, my gingerbread man. At that moment, something unexpected happened. Thank you! But, but how can it be you are talking? Gingerbread man suddenly stood up and started running. Yeah, and I can also run! The gingerbread man jumped from the kitchen bench to the chair, then to the ground and started running fast to the kitchen door to the garden. Come back! Come back! The old lady yelled. The gingerbread man began talking whilst he was running. Yeah! Run, run! As fast as you can, but nobody can catch me! Because I'm the gingerbread man! The old lady got out to the garden and started running after the gingerbread man. The man looked out the window and saw his wife running and yelled. Hey! Where are you running? The old lady answered to her husband whilst running. My gingerbread man ran away. I'm trying to catch him. The old man was speechless. The old lady ran, but the gingerbread man was so fast that it was impossible to catch him. After a short while, the gingerbread man came across a ranch. A grazing cow noticed him. Oh, what a nice cookie! I should catch and eat him! The cow also began to run after the gingerbread man. Wait! Don't run! I'm gonna eat ya! Yeah! Run, run as fast as you can! And all ladies also trying to catch me! But nobody can, because I'm the gingerbread man! The old lady and the cow were running after the gingerbread man. And at this time, a pig noticed the gingerbread man. A gingerbread man, true to my taste buds, wait and I will catch you! The gingerbread man answered the pig whilst he was running. Yeah! Run, run as fast as you can! An old lady and a cow are also trying to catch me! But nobody can, because I'm the gingerbread man! While they were running, the gingerbread man in front, the old lady, cow and the pig behind him, a chicken noticed the gingerbread man while looking for some food. That has to be my lunch! So the chicken tagged along. Run as much as you want, gingerbread man! I'm gonna catch you! Yeah, run! Run as fast as you can! An old lady, a cow, and a pig could not catch me. Neither can you. Nobody can, because I'm the gingerbread man. The gingerbread man in front, the old lady, cow, the pig, and the chicken, they all continued to run. But the gingerbread man was getting more and more further ahead from the others. The gingerbread man was so happy and very proud of himself. I'm the brightest and the fastest gingerbread man in the world. Yes, that's me. Nobody can catch me because I'm the gingerbread man. When he looked ahead, 
Soon the gingerbread man saw that he was coming across a river, and he stopped because he knew that water could make him melt away. Oh no! Oh, what now? The old lady, cow, pig, and the chicken were close now. Right at that moment, a shifty fox appeared from behind a tree. I know how to swim. If you want, I can help you. The gingerbread man thought about it. What if you eat me? You don't have to worry. I don't want to eat you. I just want to help you get across. The gingerbread man trusted the shifty fox and jumped on his tail, holding on as tight as he could. The fox jumped in the river and began to swim. Meanwhile, the old lady, cow, pig, and the chicken came to the edge of the river and saw the gingerbread man crossing the river on the back of a fox. Helplessly, they watched them go, knowing they could not catch him anymore. The river began to get deeper and the water started to rise. Hey, fox! Keep your tail up! I almost got wet! Up on my back, it's safer! The gingerbread man hopped on the fox's back. They swam for a while, but as the water got deeper, the fox's back began to sink in the water. I'm afraid that you'll get wet. Why don't you jump on my head, where it's a bit higher? The gingerbread man climbed up on his head. The fox continued to pursue his plan and dipped his head down in the water. The water has risen too much. Why don't you get on my nose? It's higher. So the gingerbread man got on top of his nose. Right when they were about to reach the shore, the fox tipped his nose, flipping the gingerbread man into the air and opened his mouth. The gingerbread man was going to fall into his mouth and the fox was going to eat him. But it didn't work. While the gingerbread man was in the air, a crow flying right above them caught the gingerbread man with his beak. The fox just stood there looking with his mouth open. The gingerbread man waited for the crow to fly a little further and asked, Do crows eat ginger cookies? Yep. When the crow opened his beak to speak, the gingerbread man fell down and began to run as fast as he could. Yeah! Run, run as fast as you can, an old lady, a cow, a pig, a chicken, a fox and a crow also tried to catch me. But nobody can, because I'm the gingerbread man! The gingerbread man kept on running and did not stop. If you see a gingerbread man pass you by running, do not try to catch him. Because he is the gingerbread man and nobody can dare catch him. A long time ago, in a small little town, there lived an old toy maker named Geppetto. He was a toy maker who carved wooden toys to sell to the townsfolk. He loved blessing children, but was sad that he never had a family of his own. He often wished he would still have a son someday, and one day, what a perfect as he was walking wood. in the woods, with this, I will be able he to carve a beautiful puppet. He saw the perfect log for his next toy project. Geppetto took the log on his back and carried it to his workshop. He put the log on his table and started to carve. But as he was carving, he heard a little voice coming from the log. <laughs> Geppetto was surprised and thought he must have been hearing voices from the children in the town. Geppetto kept on carving, but then he heard the same voice again. Hello, hello, hello. Who's calling me? I must be getting really old. Hello. Hello, I'm hearing voices. Geppetto kept on working, carving one piece at a time. First, he finished the head, then his body, his arms, and his legs and feet. Geppetto finally finished the puppet, set him on a chair, 
and started to tidy up his workshop. But then he heard the voice again. <coughs> Geppetto looked around, stunned. I'm Lou. But he could not see anybody else than the wooden puppet. So he kept on with his work. And then the new puppet started to move. He jumped down from the chair and started dancing in the room. Geppetto couldn't believe his eyes. Of course, it wasn't a real kid, but it sure laughed, talked, and played like one. You, my puppet, you're uh, dancing. <laughs> oh. Geppetto held the puppet in his arms. From now on, your name shall be Pinocchio, my child. Geppetto was so happy to have Pinocchio there, and he began to teach him about being a boy. After the summer was over, it was time for Pinocchio to go to school. But Geppetto did not have the money to buy Pinocchio his school supplies, so he sold his coat and gave the money to Pinocchio for buying school books. Pinocchio took the money and joyfully walked through the town, watching all the people in the marketplace and the shops along the way. At the edge of town, he saw a big crowd that had gathered for the circus. To find out what was going on, he walked through the crowd. It wasn't hard, because he was so short, the people didn't notice he was made of wood and just assumed he was a real boy. Pinocchio saw the huge circus tent, with a clown in front calling out to the crowd to come Let's see his show. Right come one, come all, see the amazing circus. Pinocchio thought it sounded like fun, so he went up to the mm -hmm. clown. But the clown stopped him and said, Hey, you can't go to the show. You gotta have the dough. You gotta have money for the ticket. Pinocchio thought for a while and remembered the money Geppetto gave him for school. Hmm, I have money. He took the money out of his pocket uh, and gave well, it to the clown. Yeah, do. Inside the tent, Pinocchio saw a large stage with a puppet show. He thought perhaps those puppets were alive too. Hey, what in toys? What are you playing? Jumping on the stage, Pinocchio started to dance amongst the puppets. But since he wasn't part of the show, the crowd thought he was just a boy messing up the story. But the puppet master, above the stage, could see that he was wooden. He was shocked to see a puppet without strings. Ah, a puppet without the strings would well, make me a lot of money. <laughs> and as soon as the show was over, he caught Pinocchio and put him in a cage. Pinocchio was very upset that he did not listen to Geppetto to use the money for school books and to go to school. <laughs> Seeing how regretful Pinocchio was, a fairy appeared right next to him. Who are you? I'm the one that brought you to life for Geppetto. You should have done what your father told you to do. I am glad you know that you were wrong to disobey. So I have decided to save you from this cage. Thank you, Miss Fairy. Can you help me go to school? The fairy cast a spell, and money appeared in Pinocchio's hand. Go straight to school. Do not waste this money. The fairy took Pinocchio out of the circus. Pinocchio was on his way to school once again and began to sing along the way. Hearing the singing, a shifty fox and his friend, the cat, stepped out in front of Pinocchio. They saw the money, and they wanted to trick Pinocchio to take his money away. Hello there. Where are you going so musically? I'm gonna go buy some school books. This won't be enough money for school books, but I know a way you can grow more money. What do you want me to do? There's a magic field nearby. Give me the money and I'll plant it so you can have a money tree and pick new money whenever you need it. <laughs> Pinocchio wasn't very old, 
and he believed anything the fox had said, and gave away his money. The fox and the cat quickly snatched the money and ran away. Pinocchio was left all alone, and started to wonder if he had been tricked. And then the fairy appeared again. Why aren't you still at school? Did you get the school books with the money I gave you? The fairy knew that he had given his money away to the fox. Um. Yeah. And she warned Pinocchio. Don't lie to me, Pinocchio. Tell me the truth. Um. Pinocchio did not listen to the fairy, and chose to lie about the、um, money. Um. But I bought the books, but I left them at school. As soon as Pinocchio finished his sentence, his nose started to grow. Are you telling the truth? As he told more lies, Pinocchio's nose kept growing longer and longer until it was so long he couldn't even move his head very well. Finally, he realized his nose was growing because he was lying. Ah, ah, my nose! What's going on? He told the fairy the truth, and she was pleased that he chose the right thing. So she used her magic wand. And changed his nose back to the right size. I am forgiving you because you told the truth. The fairy used her wand again to make more money, and once again warned Pinocchio not to waste any more of his money. Do not waste this money. Holding the money in his hand, Pinocchio started walking towards town again. But when he got into town, he ran into the mean puppet master from the circus. The puppet master was very upset that Pinocchio had escaped, and thought it would be best if Pinocchio disappeared. So he caught Pinocchio and threw him into the sea. Wow! But when Pinocchio fell into the sea, he did not sink. He stayed afloat on the water because he was made of wood. Oh, I float. Pinocchio really liked this feeling and started to play and swim in the water.、Whee! He played so long that suddenly he heard a splash and everything went dark. Hey, what's going on? Where am I? Pinocchio suddenly found himself in a dark place. He looked around, but could not see a way out. Pinocchio had been swallowed by a giant fish, and now he was sitting right in the middle of his stomach. Back at home, Geppetto was worried about Pinocchio, and he went out to search for him. Eventually, he came to the far side of the town where the seashore was. He asked the fishermen whether they had seen his son or not. One of the fishermen remembered seeing Pinocchio swimming in the water. Have you seen my son, about this tall, made of wood? Geppetto asked the fisherman for help. Oh, whoa! Oh my! Knowing how good a person Geppetto was, the fisherman wanted to help him, so they gave him a small boat to save Pinocchio. Geppetto jumped on the boat and sailed to the sea. But then, it started to rain more and more. Geppetto was in a storm. The small boat couldn't handle the big waves and sunk beneath the water. <laughs> Geppetto found himself in the middle of the sea. <laughs> Geppetto could not swim above the giant waves and sank deeper and deeper into the water. But then, a giant fish came. It was the fish that had swallowed Pinocchio, and it also swallowed up Geppetto. Geppetto slid down the fish's throat, right into his stomach, and then he heard the crying voice of a child. He recognized the voice right away. Pinocchio, Pinocchio, my son, I finally found you. Hearing his father's voice, I was so worried. Pinocchio hugged Geppetto. I'm so sorry I didn't listen to you, Daddy. I will always try to do what you say. The fairy heard Pinocchio say he was sorry, and appeared inside the fish to rescue them. She used a magic bubble 
to take Geppetto and Pinocchio out of the fish's belly, and they floated back to the shore. Pinocchio had become much wiser after all this, and from then on, he always listened to his father. He went to school every day, and always came home right away to help his father in his workshop. The fairy saw what a nice boy Pinocchio had become, and decided to give him a special gift. One night, when Pinocchio was sleeping, she came next to his bed and used her magic wand. In the morning, Pinocchio woke up to get ready for school, and as he was getting out of bed, he realized that something was different. He saw his hands and legs and feet. He was shocked. He was not made of wood anymore. He was a normal boy, no longer made of wood. He jumped from his bed and joyfully ran next to his father. Daddy, 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 look at me! Seeing Pinocchio as a real boy made Geppetto very happy. Oh, my son, you're a real boy now. Pinocchio. Father and son hugged each other with tears of joy. Pinocchio always told the truth, and his nose never grew long again.